Talking about watches, I know that's everybody's favorite topic out here. So <laughs> I'm going to open a new package with a new watch. I'm going to talk about the watches I already have here. You guys may wonder why I need so many. Well, need is a strong word, but <clears throat> the funny thing is I... Uh, because I travel so light, I uh, once I open this box, I'm gonna have more watches than I do pairs of underwear, which is kind of crazy. And I have a few more in back at the farm, the family farm, uh, but these are the ones I brought with me. Uh, I've got this Casio Anadigi that I bought last year. I've got this G-Shock and uh, this Vire, this is the Vire C3. It's like a field watch, quartz. I love this thing. This is the watch I wear more than any of them, uh, but it doesn't have a date window. I have my automatic, my Seiko 5 that uh, has a day date complication you can tell it's an automatic with that smooth run in seconds hand. And uh, we'll see what's in the box here in a few minutes. There's actually a, one person I know who likes watches that's gonna be, I expect he'll be coming in here and we can uh, see what's in the box. What's in the box? Well, this is uh, what it looks like. No concern because this isn't my address. Soul Deep, how you doing, buddy? So uh, the cool thing is I bought this at OXO. OXO is like 7-Eleven, it's a convenience store. So I bought this using Mercado Libre, which is uh, kind of like an eBay of Mexico, I guess you would call it. Uh, and you can pay for this stuff from Mercado Libre at OXO, 7-Eleven, different places. So I went and paid cash and then I had it delivered to uh, the DHL. I don't know, this was like a 20 minute walk or something. So when Prion comes in here, we'll open this thing. <laughs> so I guess I could talk about the watches I have a little bit. I told you guys I'd do a stay of the collection. I already kind of quickly introduced them, but this was the watch I bought that got me kind of into watches. Uh, the Seiko 5 here, it's an automatic. You can tell from the rotor in the back that turns when you walk around and swing your arm and stuff and really just move it in general. Every time this moves, it winds up the spring inside that slowly releases to turn the hands. I love this watch. It's just really different it's just i don't know it's like a i guess folks would call it a hodgepodge it has deco elements but then it's like a field watch with regular arabics instead of what would be deco arabics which i'm actually not super wild about uh and then the next watch i got after that was a g-shock but the battery in the i had a solar g-shock and the battery died so i got this cheaper model been real happy with it. These are all inexpensive watches. This was around 100, the Seiko 5. This is a, I don't know, 35 or $40 G-Shock. And then this Ana Digi, this Casio, is about a $30 watch. I really like this. The, the only problem I have with this watch is uh, it's kind of toy-like. Um, get it on here. I don't wear it much as you can tell. When you wear these straps more, they get easier to put on. There we go. It just hooks on there. I love these straps. Uh, this is an Erica's original. Um, but it's just kind of toy-like. It uh, has a little bit of elements that look kind of like the uh, Casio Duro, the dive watch. But you can see it's not these markers that look kind of like the markers on the Duro, they're just like embossed in this piece of plastic. 
and it just seems kind of, I don't know, toy-like toy is the only way I know how to put it. And the weird thing with it is, when it's on the wrist, this is going to be a hard angle to show um, without showing all the junk I tried to hide on my desk. The lugs don't turn down at all. They just kind of stick straight out. And that doesn't make for, I don't know, it just never really fits quite right because of that. So that's the one issue I have with this watch. Plus the fact that it's kind of toy-like. I mean, there's elements of it I really like. I just, I don't know, it's just very plasticky. So we're actually about to take this strap off here and put it onto the new one that we're about to open. And then lastly here, like I said, the Virus C3 that I wear more than any of them. It just doesn't have a date, uh, which lends it some extra symmetry and makes it real cool looking, but uh, I like having a date. So we're going to, this may be hard to do. I'm gonna try to do it just looking, well, actually I can look up here. So we're just gonna pop this off here and hope we don't send the spring bar completely flying. And then we'll open this box up. Hopefully by the time I get this off here, Priyank will be in here. <laughs> Priyank's gotta be thinking I'm crazy because I've been talking to him about some uh, kind of cool expensive watches, but I always end up going for cheap watches. So you don't have to worry too much. Don't have a heart attack. I knew that thing was gonna fly on me. Did I call that or what? <laughs> well, fortunately I do, okay, I found it. I do have some extras if I need them. All right. At a swap meet, a Seiko watch, he said was the model used in the movie Apocalypse Now. Oh, that's a really nice one. That's called the, the Captain Willard, <laughs> or Captain Willard. Yeah, the one that uh, Charlie Sheen, or uh, not Charlie Sheen, but his dad, Martin Sheen, wore in Apocalypse Now. That's a very cool looking watch, but it's a chunk, man. The thing's big. And they just did a re Yes, I had it set to December 1969. I don't know why the heck that happens as often as it does, but a lot of times when I set up a live stream, I'll try to put a custom time and then it's like, uh, for some reason it likes to pick December 1969. All right, that one didn't fly on me. So, uh, I just got to remember that's the six o'clock with this piece. All right, I don't know if Priyank's in here or not. We're going to go on with the festivities, guys. We're going to open this thing up and show you what I got. If you've been listening to my whole ramble right there, you can probably guess pretty well what this is going to be. treating myself even though this is not very expensive I should have maybe left it to be can you believe they use this when I went to pick this up I was like man I know the watch box is only gonna be <laughs> pretty small kind of curious that they they did it that way let's see if we can uh... man this this uh, tripod is just kind of funky. The problem is it slips around too much now. I think we gotta try this. Shit, I don't know. How the heck do people do this? There we go. Now I think this is gonna work better. I don't know, I guess it was like a flat rate thing, but I don't think it had to go far because I just ordered this yesterday. <laughs> I 
I ordered it yesterday and went to pay for it, like I said, at the convenience store down the road. And it uh, came much faster than I expected. All right, guys, here we go. You can already read it. It's another Casio. What? Don't ask me for the model number. Maybe we'll see it in here. I've been chasing this watch, guys. I, uh, back when I was in Valle de Bravo, I, uh, yes, I am Torgo Max. Uh, can you guys hear that song? <laughs> That's like my favorite song that I hear from the trucks that go driving around. It's by a band called Los Askis. A-S-K-I-S, -S. really cool song. Uh, I've been chasing this watch. I tried to order it in Valle de Bravo. I tried to uh, order it a second time in, I don't know, Pueblo or back in Mexico City or something. And even though they still had on Amazon, it's been sold out. So what this is, the special thing about this is uh, not only does it have a white dial, which I don't have a watch with a white dial until now, I have one with a cream dial that's down in Texas. Uh, but uh, this is a solar watch. And I've tried a couple analog solar watches, but they've been too huge. They've been really big on me. Uh, so let's do, this is kind of the moment, the special moment in the unboxing when you peel the stickers off. I really, this band is garbage, but you wouldn't expect much because this is like a $40 watch. Um, it is a steel case and the lugs do, turned down a bit. Now the size is going to be pretty comparable to, this is a 36 millimeter, which for me, actually, can you believe this actually looks smaller? Uh, perfect watch. It has a sapphire crystal. This is a little more expensive. This is like a hundred dollar watch on top, but this is just uh, a cheapy with a, uh, what do you call it? Plastic, uh, plastic crystal, not crystal. Um, as you can tell, the top one's domed, but the lug length looks, uh, lug to lug looks actually even a little smaller. Now this said it was 37 millimeters, but I don't know. I'm not disappointed if it's smaller, I'd actually be happy. It's like, uh, Oh, that's inches. Jump over here to centimeters. Well, yeah, it looks pretty close to 37. Um, it's 37. For some reason, though, it sure looks smaller than this 36. And if anything, white dials are supposed to, white dials are supposed to make a watch look bigger. But this is solar, so the cool thing is, let's peel the stickers off. Actually, before we even do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, this, <laughs> I'll put it on just for fun, but this strap is garbage. I certainly don't expect it's real leather. I don't know what this is made of, but I don't like, I don't really like this kind of band anyway. <laughs> it doesn't even go, how weird is that? Okay, yeah, it does. For a second, I thought it wouldn't even go small enough for my wrist. I'm like, what do they expect people to order a 36 millimeter or 37 millimeter watch and uh, have it not go that small? This looks pretty ideal size for me. Obviously no loom. Uh, on the hands, I don't think anything on this watch is loomed, but that's fine because this is a daytime watch. 
That's why I wanted one with a date, was for going around during the day, because this one I wear at night. Um, I do wear a watch while I sleep, but this is so small. This is actually, uh, the Casio looks to even be a little thicker. Um, I don't know, it's hard to tell because I have this strap on here. But this watch is super thin, this Vire. I love the dimensions of this watch. Uh, that's why I'm not that much into the automatics. You see how that recedes? The belly on this one sticks out. So it is actually thicker. Yeah, Orient watches are really nice. And uh, especially the, the Orient Star line. Do you know those? Uh, I think it's called Orient Star, the, the premium Orients. But really, I mean, even just the regular Orients. The Bambino, I've always liked a lot, but it's just kind of too... The Bambino, I think, is a little too big for me. I'd have to go more like for a Seiko uh, cocktail time. Uh, but of course... Orient also makes some great dive watches, but again, they're really big. Man, this band is so funky. I feel like I'm gonna cut my hand trying to... This is one problem with being a little bit visually impaired is uh, I don't talk too much about that, but I don't see too good up close. I have a hell of a time doing stuff like this ever since all my eye surgeries. Okay, I think I got it. There we go. Trying to do this on camera, but that's even harder because that's closer to my face. And I have to get a little distance to be able to see. I always feel like I'm gonna cut myself the way I have to do this. Because I don't have any of the uh, Watch people have tools for this sort of shit that would hold the watch. <laughs> and this band is like crammed in here. That's gonna be the next, I should have checked that before I did all this, but here we are. Yeah, let's do that. I think this should be, we'll be okay. Yeah, I think it's 18 millimeters, the lug width. Okay. Yeah, I'm too hard-headed. Uh, part of the problem I had with my eyes was from wearing glasses too much, so I kind of refused to wear them. Man, this band is hell here. Plus, I think this thing's getting kind of dull and bent. <laughs> okay. Maybe, oh man, see that's the, when I think I'm gonna cut myself. This band is like, feels like the nastiest. Do you guys remember back in the 70s when cars had like, just the worst fake leather seats. It feels like that kind of stuff, man. It's so bad. I wish they would just ship me the damn watch head, you know? If you could pay a buck or two less, it would be less for shipping. They should have that as an option on all these cheap watches because First thing I do with all these is take them off the hideous straps they come on, which just go in a pile. So wasteful, man. That's actually not a bad idea for a business. What the hell would they do with... <laughs> okay, I heard it. Come on, baby. Damn it. Okay, there we go. I got it. Now 
unfortunately, this next step should be a lot easier. Actually, I should probably just use, uh, I have some quick release. Uh, here we go. I have some quick release spring bars, I think, in uh, 18 millimeter. I believe that's a 20. Let's see. Yeah, fake leather is the pits. I have stories even about real leather. I got a really nice, for my Seiko, I bought this when I was in Thailand. Um, and I put it on a leather strap. These are 20s. Yeah, I put this on a leather strap from this uh, maker in, in uh, Singapore. Really, really nice. Uh, oh, we got these. What am I thinking? We got the, I think these are heavier duty spring bars, maybe, or maybe there's, these are probably the original ones. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna just leave these in here because this isn't going on anything right now. I'm probably just gonna use this as like a little stopwatch <laughs> because this, uh, does have stopwatch and it actually this is a good thing for me to carry because it has a you can put the most awesome thing about this little anadigi is you get uh of course you see the analog hands no second hand but this minute hand ticks every 20 seconds you just saw it go right there um and you can see in the display here if we can focus come on Right now it's 623 Wednesday. Then I've got an alarm for 930. And this is a second, uh, this is actually military time for what it is right now. And then you can see it's not matching the hands exactly. This is independent. See, that's my point with this. Uh, this says 840, but actually it's a little before that you use this little you press into this to change the hands so this you can set independently and then there's also stopwatch and then another time zone so this is the one that's actually set along with this but you can still change it independently uh, I'm, yeah you can I'm quite certain you can set both these independently so you really get two time zones and you have the choice on both of these of being military or standard 12 hour. And then you have the hands on the face, the analog hands. So you really get three time zones, which is pretty awesome because this G-Shock that costs 40 bucks, as opposed to the 30 for this little Anna Digi, this G-Shock doesn't even have any kind of world time or second time zone. All you got is regular time, uh, an alarm, one alarm, and uh, this is just a countdown timer and stopwatch, and that's it. So no second time zone at all on there. Okay, so this one we said this guy is at the 6 o'clock like this. This should look kind of cool on this green band. Now this is the part where I really need a third hand. We'll see how, how I do. <laughs> Almost made it. Almost made it, but it went behind my chair somewhere. Damn it. I need a flashlight. What a debacle, what a debacle. We'll find that in a minute. <laughs> oh man, this is so frustrating. I do this every time. 
Hi, to this. <laughs> this I do myself, but when I have to adjust a bracelet, I can't stand messing with bracelets. So I'll just take it to a watch shop. And they're so cheap in Mexico, it's like, you know, one or two bucks to get somebody to size a bracelet for you. <laughs> they charge you 10 bucks in the US. Gosh, even in, oh yeah, I was gonna continue my Seiko 5 story. This is actually kind of interesting. Uh, the Seiko 5 I bought the leather strap for in Thailand and I was traveling with it. Uh, I went to Malaysia it's really hot in Thailand too, and I walk a lot. And uh, of course, when you walk a lot in the heat, you sweat. And when I went to Malaysia, it was even hotter and more humid than Thailand. And that's when uh, I really ran into a problem with the bracelet or with the leather strap, it just fell apart on me. And I sent the guy a message. I said, look, I haven't worn this in the shower or anything. And it's just, it's all split apart, like it's actually just broken. And he said he'd send me another one with it, with tanned leather, so he did, he replaced it for me. I never even bothered putting that on the watch. I just had it back on the bracelet at that point. Yeah, I don't know if this is really uh, 18 or not, man. This will fit in here easy enough. But I think if we compare these, Yeah, these are definitely bigger. So when I looked at the specs on this uh, Casio here, the new one, I think it said like some really weird uh, lug width, like 16 or 17 or something. Um, but we can get it in here. So then in Malaysia, I was riding all over Longkawi Island on this. Uh, oh yeah, that's gonna go in there now. I was riding all over Longkawi Island on a scooter. And of course you ride around on a scooter on rough roads and your hands are shaking all over. And I was wearing my automatic, the Seiko 5, and it just, uh, I didn't notice the problem until I was in the Kuala Lumpur air airport. And I reached my hand back just to rest it on a chair and I whacked the watch when I did that on like this uh, really hard plastic chair, whacked it really hard, the face of the watch. And when I looked down to see what time it was after that, uh, or basically to look down to see if the watch was okay, the second hand had fallen off. Um, and it was just loose inside the, inside the case. So I took it to, uh, I took it to the, watch guy in Long Kali Island. And he only charged me like 20 ringgit to fix that. Um, I think it was 20 ringgit to put the second hand back on and to switch some, I switched some uh, straps around on some watches I had with me, man. There we go, we got it. Now the other side. And uh, now the worst thing is when you do all this and then you realize you mount it upside down. Which, I'm gonna make sure I got this right. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, it's a little snug, but uh, it's just fine. This is gonna look cool. Uh, 20 ring it is five dollars us <laughs> so how much do you think if you took this watch into a watch shop in the united states and the second hand was just floating around bouncing around inside the case and you asked them to remount the second hand which is actually a pain in the ass to do from what i understand what do you think they'd charge you probably a little more than five bucks Okay, we'll get this on here. I think I got this right. Oh no, I don't. This is the 18. I gotta take this one here. 
And then I'll find the other 18 on the floor after all this. <laughs> Okay, just about got it. Works better when it's the right size for the case. Yeah, Orient is really good. You know what's r really interesting too is uh, the sub brands of Orient, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, isn't Orient like a sister company or subsidiary of Seiko, or am I imagining that? I kind of think they are. And what you'll find when you look into these brands, like, did I say Casio or Seiko? I meant Seiko. That Seiko is, Orient is either a sister company or subsidiary of Seiko. But when you look at Seiko and Casio, they have many sub-brands. Like in the case of, uh, Seiko, you've got Loris, uh, which is actually really cool. I have a Loris field watch, and that was a smoking deal. My Loris field watch, if I had my Loris field watch with me, I probably wouldn't have been so psyched about getting this piece here because, here we go, because uh, that has a cream dial. It has Arabics all the way around, and it has a date but it's not solar. The solar watches I had, I bought a, uh, a Citizen that was solar that I saw in a Nut and Fancy video. Um, it looks like a Bell and Ross, <laughs> if you know that watch. Uh, and it was uh, EcoDrive, Citizen's solar line, but it was like 40 millimeters. It was way too big for me. I think this is gonna work. Just fine. And then I got another uh, uh, Casio Solar, an edifice, which, uh, you know, this dial is really interesting. Let me see if I can get this in some better light. It's got this, you see the middle, and uh, when you see the photos of these watches, especially on like, uh, Amazon or these websites online, uh, the photos rarely do them justice. And I've seen, you see how you get this, like uh, these concentric circles in the middle? I've seen that on some other solar Casios and Seikos for that matter. And I didn't know really what the dial was gonna look like with it being solar because sometimes you can see a little bit of the solar element if it's a little transparent. With this being white, I wasn't sure. But this metal part, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but because of those concentric circles, it almost has like a pearlescent uh, kind of effect. It's really cool looking, but perfect size. I think this is gonna work great. And I finally got, a, finally got an analog watch that's solar that's going to, uh, fit me well that's pretty perfect and i actually really like that it uh does not have loomed hands you know where all this is just paint you know inside these hands and you can see the color of the loom this actually has this faux patina on the c3 on the wire but on the uh Seiko with their Lumi Bright, it's like a, almost like a minty toothpaste -y kind of color. I really like it. And I love the sword hands on this watch. I wish this watch had these hands, especially with those little pointy markers. I think they would look great instead of the syringe hands. I'm actually not a big fan of these, especially because they painted the second hand and they didn't paint the edges of the minute and the hour hand, so it really makes the second hand more prominent. <laughs> you have to get it in just the right light to catch, see that on the hour hand there? So really, that is the one thing I'm not wild about on this watch is the handset. I really like the second hand. 
but uh, I've thought about putting some other ones in there. This is a Rolex homage, obviously Rolex Explorer homage. So and it has some elements of an Omega. That's what the, the pointy bits make me think of. But, uh, and the K shape is almost more like a vintage uh, Omega Seamaster. Ah, leaving Amarillo. Cool. See you, Josh. Uh, so, I thought about getting some old, or some, they don't even have to be real Rolex hands, but get some Explorer hands with a Mercedes Hour hand to throw in here. I think if I find myself in Asia and I need a battery replacement, I'll probably take it somewhere and say, can you guys put like some <laughs> different hands in here? and uh, when you replace the battery, but these stick hands on here, this is a pretty cool looking watch, especially for 40 bucks. And to have it solar for 40 bucks, gosh. Now this is a gunmetal, you know, this strap, I actually bought for that Loris I was just telling you about that titanium watch. And uh, I got the gunmetal metal pieces on it because uh, it matched the titanium, but that doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and set this up here. I'm sure we got a quick set date. Yep. So we're looking at uh, Wednesday the 23rd. I think it's only a concern with The day part, I'm gonna go ahead to be safe. What did I say, the uh, 23rd? So we'll put this to 22. This is one issue is I'm gonna be able to read the date, especially on the two day days two digit days, I mean to say. Okay, I went all the way over, 31. What did I say, 22? Yep. Tw 21, 22, perfect. And now we go forward, so we know we got the right 12 hour well, when this turns to 23, that'll be midnight last night. Well, I really like this. You get in the right light and uh, the hands, okay, so that was noon. The hands look black. I think I'm really gonna like this watch. So this will basically be my daytime watch. Probably the watch I'll wear the most during the day because it has the date. There, it switched right at midnight, that's cool. Okay. So that's 6 a.m. <laughs> it's a lot of turning on these tiny ones, but the cool thing is with this watch, now it's not gonna have, what's the word for it? Not a, it's not a perpetual calendar if it only has the day, but there's a word for watches that you never have to, you never have to adjust for a 30 or 31 day month. There's a word for that. Uh, this is Sam 56. We're actually gonna go ahead and really synchronize this with, well, I'm not sure even how accurate this is right now, but. Hmm. This isn't ticking. That's weird. <laughs> Did I get a dud? 
Did you guys notice if it was ticking earlier in the video? <laughs> oh man. After all this, I guess I should have made sure that the second hand was moving. Did you guys notice? <laughs> That's too funny. I'm gonna have to switch this back. I ain't putting the damn plastic band back on this. That's gonna be a hassle. If I have to return it. I don't know, that's funny. Through this whole thing, I didn't notice that the second hand was moving. I could have got a dud, guys. If I didn't, I hope I didn't, man. This was the last one they had in stock. And uh, like I said, I've been chasing this watch. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Cool to see someone on here who's into watches. Gorgon or Tor Torgo Max. So, uh, yeah. Have a nice evening, guys. Hopefully uh, my watch starts ticking. See you in the next video.